Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Retro Hardware. Some of you have left comments that you wish these episodes were a little bit longer, so we're gonna mix up the format a little bit with you today. This is gonna be the first of a three-part Retro Hardware. We're still gonna cover one system per episode, but all these systems are gonna be linked as they were created by the same video game inventor, Mr. Gunpei Yokoi. Yokoi started working for Nintendo way back in 1965, way before any video games were invented. For those of you who don't know, Nintendo actually started out as a playing card company. Yokoi's initial job at Nintendo was he was a maintenance guy who helped maintain the assembly lines that printed these playing cards. He soon gained a reputation as a guy who was handy with electronics and who built toys and gadgets in his free time. He totally reminds me of the Data character from Goonies. Back in the mid-60s, Nintendo was actually struggling financially as the playing card market was drying up. The president of Nintendo at the time desperately was looking for a hit and called Yokoi into his office. Yokoi presented the president with a toy that he had been working on in his spare time. This was an extending arm that could reach and grab for items once you pushed on its handles. The president loved this toy and immediately gave Yokoi the green light to mass produce this toy. This toy eventually became known as the Ultra Hand and became a huge hit for Nintendo. And the Ultra Hand makes a cameo appearance in Mario Power Tennis and also can be seen as one of the mini games in WarioWare Inc. Pretty soon Yokoi would move on from his maintenance duties and go on to head up his own R&D division over at Nintendo, where he would develop the Game & Watch series. Legend has it Yokoi was riding on a train where he noticed a businessman mindlessly tapping away at a calculator. Yokoi thought, hey, maybe people would be interested in a portable gaming device to pass the time when they were riding on trains. Here are a couple Game & Watch devices. These are essentially the precursors to the Game Boy. They came out in the early 80s and they had LCD screens. But unlike the Game Boy, you couldn't swap out the games. So if you wanted to play a different Game & Watch, you'd have to borrow one from your friend or buy a different Game & Watch system. These Game & Watches were innovative for several reasons. First off, they were the first ones to use this style of directional pad, which would later be used on your Nintendo NES controller, your Wii remote. Other consoles at the time used the more traditional joystick. And secondly, take a look at this Game & Watch's design. Does it look familiar? Yep, these Game & Watches were the original OG Nintendo DS's. I want to show you this last Nintendo Game & Watch this is Donkey Kong 3 from their Versus series. What's cool about this guy is you open him up and he's got two controllers that you pull out so you can play with a buddy competitively. But all of these Game & Watches would soon become obsolete with Yokoi's next invention, the Game Boy. Now's a good time to talk about Yokoi's game design philosophy, which has the awesome title of Lateral Thinking of Withered Technology. What this translates into was that Yokoi believed that you did not need to use cutting edge technology with respect to games and toys. Instead, you could use older technology, which was cheaper and more well understood in new and cutting edge ways. With respect to the Game Boy, this mainly applied to its monochrome LCD screen. Color was available at the time, but it was way more expensive and also would have drained battery life. Even though competitors like Sega Game Gear, which had a backlit color screen, and the Atari Lynx, which was 16 bits, instead of 8 bits, and also had a color backlit screen, were technically far more superior to the Game Boy, they weren't able to match its success. The Game Boy was Yokoi's greatest triumph, selling over 65 million units before the Game Boy Color arrived. There were numerous games for the Game Boy, I don't have time to go through all of them, but I do want to spotlight the ones that Yokoi-san produced. These were Metroid 2, Kid Icarus, and Super Mario Land 1 and 2. Nintendo is infamous for releasing hardware and then releasing a whole bunch of hardware revisions afterwards, and the Game Boy was no exception. Here's the original Game Boy, followed by the Game Boy Pocket, which actually was the last system that Yokoi produced before he left Nintendo. Before we go, I want to show you this cool Game Boy Lite system. Unfortunately, this was only released in Japan, but it really should have come out in the States and elsewhere. It's only marginally bigger than a Game Boy Pocket, but what's cool is it's got a cool Indiglo blue backlit light. So you didn't have to play in direct sunlight, you could play in the dark, which was one of the biggest gripes of the original Game Boy. That's it for part one. Thanks for joining me. Stay tuned for part two, where we talk about the controversial Virtual Boy, also developed by Gunpei Yokoi. Happy collecting.